Welcome to Lifelines. This is John Augustine. Who was America's most important musician? My money is on Louis, not Louis, Satchmo Armstrong. The Satchmo, if you're curious, was short for Saddlemouth, his favorite nickname, and he did have a big mouth. But everybody in the business called him Pops, the father of us all, and that's also the title of his most recent biography by Terry Teachout. Jazz is only about 100 years old. There are people alive today who could have heard Buddy Bolden shout, and that's about as far back as we can go. For half that century, Pops was the big dog, especially among his fellow musicians. Armstrong started from nothing. The back streets of New Orleans, a single mother who couldn't manage him. After a couple of childhood incidents, he was placed in the Colored Waifs Home for Boys, a reform school where he was given strict discipline and a cornet for the school band. Six years later, he was probably the outstanding jazz horn player in the country. His mentor was Joe Oliver, a trumpeter who led the best jazz band in New Orleans. When he moved the band to Chicago, he sent for Lewis to join him there, and Chicago jazz was born. Oliver was tough on the kid, but Armstrong loved him like a substitute father. Years later, when Pops was established, he bumped into Joe Oliver in Savannah, selling vegetables out of a cart. The early jazz scene was precarious. Characteristically, Lewis emptied his pockets, about $150, and gave it to the old maestro. In the 1920s, Teachout says, Armstrong drastically expanded the musical language of jazz. The Oliver Band had played set pieces as a unified ensemble, but Lewis scaled down to a small combo that allowed more solo work, improvisation, spontaneity, out of Dixieland and into jazz as we know it. Other players joined him in that progress, but Pops led the pack and was clearly the most talented. Not only his unmatched trumpet playing, but his singing. Lewis had that famous gravelly voice from his youth, and it grew gravelier as he aged. But when he combined it with his innovation of scat singing, his voice became closer to another instrument in the band. A great jazzy idea. Ella Fitzgerald benefited from this inheritance. And by the way, a gravelly voice never hurt Jimmy Durante's career, as the ending of Sleepless in Seattle reminds us. In his old age, Pops made a hit out of Mac the Knife well before Bobby Darren covered it. He also recorded a song from an obscure musical still titled in its previews, Dolly, a Damned Exasperating Woman. After Pop's single hit number one on the charts, they changed the name of the show to Hello, Dolly. Bing Crosby, the preeminent popular singer of the era, testified, I'm proud to acknowledge my debt to the Reverend Satchelmouth. He is the beginning and end of music in America. Pops had a hard time in the big band era and worse after the war when Parker and Gillespie invented bebop. He hated bop, wouldn't play it, so they accused him of being stuck in the past. They also criticized his minstrel mannerisms in performance. Hadn't they seen Fats Waller roll his eyes over Ain't Misbehavin' or Cab Calloway strut through Minnie the Moocher? It was the style of the times when jazz musicians also defined themselves as entertainers, and Pops stuck with it. But his towering musicianship was never in question, especially among his fellow trumpeters. Downbeat Magazine polled jazz fans every year during the swing era, and Harry James usually won in the trumpet category. Harry's reaction was, How can they possibly vote for me when Lewis is in the same contest? Even Miles Davis, about as far from pop style as you can get, said of him, You can't play nothing on trumpet that doesn't come from him. After Armstrong's death, NASA launched a satellite which included musical selections, potentially a universal language that would give anybody out there an idea of essential human nature. The recordings included a Bach prelude, the first movement of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, and Louis Armstrong playing melancholy blues. Lucky aliens should prepare to be astonished. The book is Pops by Terry Teachout, published by Houghton Mifflin. I'm John Augustine, and this program is Lifelines.